Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts Oh, yes, Sunday. Of course, we're on Monday here. Yeah? We're on Monday there. How's your husband? Uh, he's getting there, but he's still in hospital. Yeah. Can't uh, can't visit because... Uh, uh, so I'm in New South... Well, we live in New South Wales, and we're in even... The whole of the state is in lockdown, and then he's in Canberra, which is the Australian Capital Territory, and they're in lockdown. And so no visits, no nothing. This has been your sixth lockdown. Uh, yeah, something like that. But in so in Sydney, which is in the capital of New South Wales, it's um, uh, they've had terrible problems. But then because of the spread of Delta variant, um, the whole of New South Wales, so the whole state. So, yeah, it's not good. <clears throat> not good. You, you don't have to tell me, honey. I'm in California, and uh, yeah, folks are, are you in, up are you, out. Are you in lockdown? No. <laughs> they well, you know, people lock down, and then they want to bully you if you wear a mask, and then they want to yeah. talk bad. And they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to wear a uh, a mask. They don't want to get the vaccine. It's arrogance. Yeah, so we Look, have never experienced anything like this. So it's trial and error, doggone it. Exactly. We've got exactly the same here, and human nature is just coming out at its worst. It's appalling. These people, you know, and it's like, you know, and our children. Yeah. It's an example. I don't yeah. think they acted. I was looking back at some old uh, images of when they had the plague and when they had TB and all that. They didn't act that way then. No, I know. It's disgraceful. It's it's just disgraceful. I mean, the, you know, the finger pointing, the blame, the judgment, everything else, it's just shocking. Absolutely shocking. Well, you know what? You are beyond shocking. You are here with me on the edge and my brains. I'm so glad to have you, Jane Perkins. You are beautiful. I love those glasses too. Oh, thank you very much, April. <laughs> and uh, you know, life is good. And life is are- excellent. You are a person that is going to teach us something new and what I call revolutionary because everybody's not hip to these Akashic records. My husband was just asking me a few minutes ago, he says, who is your guest today? And I told him, I said, it's Jane Perkins from Australia. And he said, well, what are you going to talk about? And I said, Akashic records. Now, he says, well, baby, why do people want to delve that far into their past? I told them because it is a way to unlock your future. Yeah. He goes, but there's going to be a lot of trauma that could submerge. I said, but there's going to be a lot of wisdom too. Yeah. There's going to be, you know, you might be able to connect with, you know, signs of your characteristics and your personality that you never knew existed. Yeah. This might catapult you to the next level. Yeah. It can also, again, you know, uproot some deep, dark fears you know, some trauma, some anxiety. Absolutely. So you're going to tell me and you're going to explain to me in my brains what is the fascination because everybody's talking about it. I mean, I'm seeing it everywhere. And I know that it's not new and revolutionary. Oh, I look that, I love that scarf. I wonder where this came from. It's I beautiful. Know. It is beautiful. And it looks it's, beautiful on you. Yes, it does. It's my color. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. A real pashmina. I love pashmina. It's gorgeous. So you're going to teach us, help us, and now I gave you something to wrap us in with love. Please yes. tell my brains a little bit about you, Jane Perkins. Okay, so I um, I was actually born in England um, eons ago in a military family, and my father was in the British Army, and uh, I was lucky if I spent six, nine months in any country, let alone school, let alone a house. I was the eldest of, oh, I still am the eldest of um, four kids. Um, I was a very self-contained kid, uh, happy to be by myself, happy to be with groups. It didn't really matter. 
very sporting as long as I had my books and a bed and food and a roof over my head. I didn't know where I, I didn't care where I went. And in fact, I thought everybody lived like I did. Um, and, you know, I don't care about color, creed, uh, socioeconomic, uh, religion, not religion. I don't give a shit about, oh, excuse me. Uh, about girl, it, about, <laughs> you can party on the edge. Party <laughs> on the edge. About any of it. Anyway, I then got married to, guess what, an army officer um, uh, in, in Germany, but he was a British army officer and transferred to Australia. So, you know, fast forward many years. And again, we traveled. I lived in the US. I've lived in the US on two stints for a total of about seven years in uh, Fort Leavenworth, not in one of the prisons, but in, in, at the military base um, in uh, Kansas. And then I lived on a llama ranch for oh, I can't remember how long, a um, couple of years um, in Washington State where I was doing some... Um, Let me yeah, interrupt yeah. there. When you lived on the llama ranch, they say the llamas spit. Do they spit? They do. They do. But it's, you know, you and I'd spit if we got a bit cranky if somebody came a bit close and we didn't okay. like the body. Okay. All right. Okay. Didn't like the energy. Some do, some don't. Um, it's a matter of how you treat them. Um, alpacas are probably gentler than, than llamas, but they're, they're interesting animals. And that brings me then on to, so fast forward to now, um, energy. We are people of energy. Generally, people don't understand that. So if you look at animals, they all understand energy. They don't understand us weird human beings in this structure of what we call a body. Um, and all you've got to do is look at um, things like things that come to mind immediately is the tsunamis where um, I forget where it was now and the elephants and the birds all disappeared up into the mountains. Right. And these villages were just decimated with the with the tsunami. So these animals knew. Now, if we plug into our energies, which is all inside of us, um, life can be very, very different very very different and the power of divine love and understanding our purpose and that's where the akashic records come in but we can find our purpose through many 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 um, modalities um, and i do a bit of astrology as well and numerology and it all comes back to the same thing so the akashic records is all about our soul and our soul is something we can't see. It's divine love, it's joy, it's freedom, it's happiness, and all the rest. And then we, on the opposite side, we've got the mind. The mind you can't see, you can't operate on it. People think the brain is the mind. It's not. It's invisible. All right. But that's where the mental, the mental things think, 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 think. Um, we need to bring that back into the soul, into the heart. So what do the Akashic records look like first up? Now, it might not be the same for everybody, so I'm just speaking for myself. Um, and uh, I see when I go through a meditative process to get to the Akashic records is this whopping great big library. If you can imagine a building bigger than, bigger than anything you can possibly imagine, and I looked at it, and what I related to was the library of Harry Potter. Everybody's seen Larry Potter. so we Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's massive. It is massive. And within that library, there are various, what would you call them, um, tiers of floors. And in that is everybody's soul book, the book of life. And um, I go in there and... I just love it. I absolutely love going in there. So this whopping great big timber door with a great big black knocker. So I, I knock on the door and I have two little guides who they're the same ones every single time. My Akashic guides, two of them, they're literally about this high. And when I walk in the door, every time they clap, they clap and welcome me in. Oh. And uh, they sit me at a table and a chair, and it's exactly the same table, exactly the same chair. I then ask for the book of records uh, for an individual. So when I'm working with clients, I need four things. Their current name, their full current name, their full date of birth, uh, full um, 
uh, name at birth, their date of birth and their place of birth. Now, the reason for the two different names, and it might be the same name, is to make sure that it's not confused with another individual. And we don't, we don't want that. Uh, so then I go through a particular process. And there are lots and lots of questions that I ask. And I provide all my clients with a um, online hours reading. And they get a written document as well with heaps more information. So first of all, is this, have I located the soul tick? Yes. I mean, if not, obviously nothing goes ahead. Um, does the soul seek assistance? Now, this is where the healing comes in. Every soul will need assistance. So I'll get on to that a bit later. Um, uh, any blocks to truth? No, if there are blocks to truth, then there, again, the reading stops because the soul doesn't want to give you any information. Uh, assigned to an archangel realm tick and then what percentage is, is an individual aligned with divine light divine love and divine truth we don't need to worry too much about the percentages but it gives us an idea of how far we've we've come in getting to our internal being true being <laughs> So, we look at words, so what you're saying, so how close are we spiritually to God? How close are we Correct. to the divine? You've uh, got are, it. We, are we practicing this? Are we disciplined in that? Have we received the learnings and the teachings? What so are the challenges? And the challenge, okay. Yep, exactly, exactly. Now, part of that will come out with what they call the archangel realm of training. I'll use me as an example. All right. Um, so my archangel, my archangel realm of training is um, uh, Archangel Michael. So it's the warrior. A lot of people, a lot of people get. He's busy. <laughs> he's very busy. He's very people, very. A lot of people get Archangel Michael. They do. He's very very busy, but that, that it means that for my energy, for my soul's energy, I need to use Archangel Michael. Um, I can be perceived as, and anybody with this um, realm of training will be perceived as being a bit abrupt or assertive. Some would call um, aggressive. Um, a spade is a spade, is probably a shovel in some cases. So the challenge for us is to tone it down a little bit. All right. And I know I can do that. Um, and people don't see that inside I'm actually just a piece of loving jelly. Right. I saw it. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> I'm full of love. It's the only way to go, particularly in this day and age. Then um, we've got things like uh, called soul groups. We, our soul belongs to a group which is the soul of origination. So that's when it's come from source, right from the get-go. It That group never, ever changes, no matter what body the soul is in or whether it's gone on sabbatical or whatever. It's it is always the same. Mine is Arcturus. And Arcturians, uh, the soul origination was from the Galactic Council. And we find it very difficult to be on this earth in human structure because we don't understand why, well, we do understand, but you know, a challenge is um, well, why do people, the human race, behave like they do? Well, they're controlling their fear factor, their greed, their blame, their judgmental, their jealous, blah, 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 blah. So why would my soul want to come back on this earth? It, my soul has decided to come back on this earth in this lifetime to kick ass. Mm. In, a, in a nutshell, that's what we're on about. Um, we don't, we don't, um, don't mess around. Um, uh, and it's not easy. It's absolutely not easy. Um, but that's where we're going to divine. Well, it's not easy because you're doing the heavy lifting. <clears throat> yeah. You know, soul, yeah. soul lifting is big business. Yeah. Uh, now, what do you say to the skeptic? You say to this person, you know, and, and they are out there and they're listening to this show right now. And they're saying to myself, this is a bunch of hoo-hoo and this person is trying to trick me up. Yeah. Uh, you know, and again, my opinion is if you are not open to this type of modality, if you are not opening and expanding your bandwidth 
to embrace this, you're not going to get it. I don't give a heck what you do. Yeah, you know? exactly. You're not exactly. going to get it because you really don't want to receive it. Yeah, exactly. And, and you don't want to know. Um, but if you want to know your purpose, and I'm finding that the the age group, you know, the, that wisdom bit, particularly women, um, any any age from sort of 30 years onwards, and they're, they're maturing, they want to know more, they're questioning more. So, uh, okay, so I'm doing ABC job, I've got ex-husband, I've got three kids, I've got two animals, I've got a roof over my head. But you know what? It doesn't actually fit. So something's missing and it's nothing to do with anybody else around them. It's all to do with the individual. Everything is to do with us. Um, and so they'll start asking questions. And one of the questions is, well, what is my purpose? And this will show what their purpose is, particularly in um, the um, archangels and the soul group. That will show the purpose and it will show the, um, the challenges that they're facing. And most of the time, the challenges aren't that difficult. You know, people go into fear factor. Oh, and yeah. You know, the worst thing that can happen, and with this type of work, it doesn't happen, but the worst that I say to people, well, you know, if you want to get out of the fear factor, let's clear clear the, the negative crap. And um, the worst that's going to happen is you're going to scream and shout and burst into tears. I mean, right. for God's sake. You know, Jay, there's a lot of people that are talking about epigenetics. And that's yeah. what I was talking to Mr. Magnificent about. That past generation, girl, that's my dude. I'm sorry. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, you know, that is uh, a part of our DNA. We're yeah. trying to clear stuff that grandma had, great grandma had, you know, immigrants yeah. had when they came over, yeah. when they were traumatized on the ship or when they had to swim the shore or, you know, sexual yeah. abuse, all of that. People don't yeah. like to relive that. Because a lot of times what they say is it sets up, you know, you're clearing one thing, but you're setting a path for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Yep. Okay. So again, and I, you know, I give it to you 110% because I'm supposed to have the opposing view here. Uh, but, you know, you set this up and now people are traumatized more because they, you know, knowledge is, well, okay, now that's not everybody. Knowledge is only power when it's applied. Correct. So they need to do that. So you clear this stuff. I clear this stuff. And uh, so there's a whole process to go through to clear all this negative crap. Um, and I go into the individual's uh, records and it turns out like it's a bit of a story. So were there any contracts signed? Were there any vows made? Um, were there any um, misuse of power? I'll just have a look here. Are there any um, uh, anger spears that are attached? Uh, any memory loss? Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a memory loss from the soul level, you've got to remember, not memory loss from, from the human being. Um, any negative astral travels? Um, there's a, any curses, um, binds, wow. bindings or spells? And it's not necessarily going to be everything. It might only be one thing, mm -hmm. right? It might only be one. It might be two or three. Now, what I do, they do not have to be present, all right? Unlike hands-on healing, where often it's you've got to be present or you've got to do distant healing with a you know, cushion or something like that. And um, you, you, they do not have to be present. I just go through, find out the story, clear the energy, and it works a treat. They won't they probably will not even have a reaction. Mm. What I also then, I tell them what, what the story is and how it's, and, and that it's been cleared. You're two but little then what, you the what? You tell your two little people? Are they still with you? Yeah, yeah, my two little people are there when I ask for them. Okay. My two little Akashic guards, yep. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, and then what I do is once I've cleared everything, so I'll get onto the client and say, yes, it's cleared. But then I give them some text that is um, related to the clearing, which they don't have to do, but it's absolutely advisable that they do every day for 28 days. And what that is doing is pretty much putting a stamp on what I've already cleared. 
So they are acknowledging that, yes, it's been cleared. And yes, I'm, I'll say these words. You know, it might be two lines. It depends on what the issue is. Okay. Uh, it could be four lines. Let me let me stop you right here. Yep. So the client is in the, the client is just sitting there watching this. Is the client in a meditative state? Is the client no. sleep? No. This is just something that you are doing as a yep. and you're interceding on their behalf as an absolutely, absolutely. And of course, none of this works gets done without permission from an individual ever. And if anybody says that they read the Akashic records and go in without permission from somebody, uh, that is a big, big no-no. Mm. Big no-no. You always have to have permission. And I am so you have to have that. You have to have permission, but can someone delve into your Akashic records like they, uh, like they uh, hack your computer? Can they no. hack your heart? Can they hack your hey. soul? They can, but I've got all the power and divine love in, in me that it won't happen. No, I'm not saying you, but I'm just saying yeah. because you know, I could have people, like I have people that do energy work and light yes. work. Yes. And I had one guest that was uh, going to come on the show uh, that is a witch. Yep. And so, you know what? I'm open to, because I'm open to the conversation, but when I got to looking into her a little deeper, she was no joke. I'm talking about yeah. incantations. I'm talking about the Antichrist. I'm talking, you know, and that was just too heavy for me to carry. I didn't even yeah, want yeah, to yeah, yeah. that energy around me. So no. people do, okay, and, and I want my brains to understand, people have power. Don't think that, you know, the, everybody is just a joke because they're not. No. I remember one time I was standing in a woman, I was at a networking meeting. And uh, she wanted to do some energy work with me. And again, I don't let everybody in my space. No. You know, I know how this Correct. works. Okay. I Correct. know how it works. Yep. And she said, and she says, I'd like to gain permission. She says, if I ask you a certain question and your body moves a certain way, you know, I'm going to know if I have access and, and you've given permission. And I'm saying to myself, mm -hmm. all right, well, we're going to watch this. I'm, I'm going to trick her up. I stood there, I planted my feet firmly on the ground. I, you know, got a little gap between and I was not going to be moved. I shall not be moved. Honey, she said, may I gain permission? And my body jerked. I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe I was just off guard. She asked me two or three questions. I shut her down because yep. I knew that she had power. Yep. And that's a really interesting point. I have, and I, and I say this with, great humility let me tell you because it's taken a while for me to accept it i have huge power as well mm -hmm. but god help me and anybody else who abuses that power it is wrong it is wrong we well, you only have to pay for it. you have to pay for it god is not going to give you a gift and you misuse it and don't think exactly. there's no repercussion from it you may not see it now you may get a whole lot of money you may get a whole lot Time of money. A bitch, isn't it? it'll come oh. back you know, but karma is here to teach you a lesson too. It's not just for, of course. it's not just for a punishment. So let me ask you another question. How do you yes. cleanse yourself? You're doing, how do I cleanse life. myself? How do you cleanse yourself? Because you are again, a conduit. You are the person that is taking on this information, processing it. Yes. You are here to deliver it to the, the, you know, to the soul that is inquiring that, but it's still weighted on your heart and it's weighted on your mind. Yeah. No, okay. no, no, I am completely detached and I get the information from the, what are we, sixth, seventh, seventh chakra up here and the particular process of a very short and quick, only because I'm practicing, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years, mm -hmm. that I can get into the records within nanoseconds, but I take time out to start off with to bring the light into me. All right. And I can always, I can always feel it or I see it. So my body gets very hot and I see the white light coming in. And then I go through this very quick meditative process to get into the records. Um, but I also have to remember, and sometimes I forget, uh, to close it off when I come out of the records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I have to, I have to close the door. Having had my two gorgeous guides with, makes me so humble when I leave is to, um, they bow three times to me and then lay down and kiss my feet. Wow. Oh, it's amazing. But yes, I don't, I don't cleanse. I mean, on a daily I basis. If Mr. I wonder if Mr. Magnificent is an Akashic guy. 
Is he on there? <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's not a real tall man, but honey, he will bow and he will kiss my feet. Yes, sir. Well, then. They... And, he, oh, and he opens up the portal for me to get information all the time. Well, then you why know? don't you anoint him? <laughs> hey, 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 I'm going to have another conversation with him after this. Well, let me ask you a question. What drew you to this? I mean, you know, did you just wake up one morning and say, you know, this is what I want to do for a living? No. What was your call? No, 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 no. It's been years and years and years of um, questioning, researching, um, going through various courses, um, like very qualified courses. So I'm an NLP practitioner, timeline okay. therapy practitioner. Um, I uh, do astrology. Oh, God, I can't even think now. Um, there's a whole range of things. I've just finished some training on um, archetypes, which is absolutely fascinating. I have spent many, many years looking at myself. Oh, plus, plus, I see things. So I see things and I hear things. So I'm clairaudient and clair, uh, clairaudient and clairvoyant. Um, they're my big things. I, in younger years, I would see what I call visions. So just like the TV screen, just like this, within 24 hours, up to four days, that vision became reality, right? So uh, I, I can give you one example of my younger sister who lives in England. Her eldest son was coming out to visit Australia and she didn't know what the date was. And I said, that's okay, don't worry about it. Just let me know and I'll drive up to Sydney and I'll pick him up at the airport. And then, uh, I don't know, a few weeks went past or something. And I saw this TV screen and there was I driving parallel to the airport on a foggy winter's day with these whopping great big uh, street lights going across the, the highway um, parallel to the airport. And guess what? Within 48 hours, she sent me a message and said, her son would be at um, Sydney airport at you know, 6.30 in the morning or something. And there was I driving down for real, for real, down this road with exactly the same scene that I saw in the vision. So that's just one example. Um, the bushfires that we had two years ago down here, devastating, absolutely devastating, just similar to what you've had over there. Right. Um, homes lost, it was just awful. I saw a vision and I knew that our town was going to be right. I have great difficulty in advertising that because people don't trust what goes on. I trusted it, but I did what the authorities said and uh, it was it was okay within the township. Surrounding areas wasn't okay. What do your, so, friend, your friends, family and husband think? Because, you know, sometimes they'll say, you know, a Jane is cray cray. <laughs> Yeah, yep. yeah, but Jane is yep. not, you know, but when it manifests, because I've manifested some things and I, it scared me because I was like, wow, I really have a gift, I really have a talent. I don't Absolutely. have mine, I have never uh taken training, I've just yep. trusted God's word and vision and just been shocked beyond my belief. But what yep. did your parents think and your family think when they found out that you really truly have this gift? I didn't speak too much about it um with my parents and they've now passed over um i kept quiet about it for a long time so i'm on my second marriage my first husband um we separated and then he died um thought i was a complete and utter not case mm. complete and utter not case didn't believe in any of it didn't understand it um my friends uh, as i've slowly got my voice because I needed my voice because I was always shut down before. Um, I've spoken about it way more and this now I'm, you know, voicing everything now. Um, uh, have accepted it, but still think I'm nuts. Still think I'm nuts. Because uh, they don't quite understand how we can do this, but everybody can do it. We're spiritual beings in a human right. body. We're all energy. We're all matter. It's all and energy. You know, how many times, Brains, have you heard that little voice how many yeah. times? That, that is it. That's intuition. It's not some, you know, great yes. grand scheme. But the thing of it is, do you listen? Yeah. Do you act on it? Are you in right. tune to it? That's the right. key. That's and the that key. is that you're absolutely right, April. That is the key. So if you get the visions, if you hear words, if you get the gut feeling, what action are you going to take to ensure that occurs? Or uh, and 
I have a lot of uh, communication in dreams. Yep. I, had a dream, I had a dream this morning uh, yep. about something that, and it will manifest. Yes. Now again, brains don't think this is not a vision board. This is not something that you can just create and, and everything's going to be wonderful because again, there can be some trauma in there, but you yep. can kind of prepare yourself and cushion yourself. This is not to say that life is not going to unfold and do what it's supposed to do anyway. Well, you know what? It's some guidance. Now, okay, let me ask you that, though. Do you think that when people have this information that they are able to change directions yeah. or modify what's going to yeah. happen to them? Yeah. Do you think or, so? or, I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course you can. Of course you can. It depends on whether you think you're on the right path or not. And we all take, you know, various... And they're the decisions and choices we make in life right. as a human right. being. Right. Um, and it's a matter of, of choice. Um, so I, I, just as an example, boundaries. I put in boundaries of what I ac will accept and what I won't accept. I will not accept liars, right? In the house or anywhere else. Um, you're, off my, you're off my Christmas card list. I won't have anything to do with it. I will be heard, I will be heard. if you don't like it, don't talk to me. I don't care. Plenty of other people will. Now, I didn't, I wasn't like that years ago. But now that I've found out these things, it's absolutely fine. And what we're going through at the moment, too, with, you know, that that shall not be named, because I refuse to name it, mm -hmm. um, and the chaos around the world. We're in the age of Aquarius. We're now in fifth dimension energy. And that's all third dimension stuff. So we need to separate that, that, um, trauma, fear factor, all the rest of it, um, so that we are in that fifth dimensional energy, which is all about divine love and a whole heap more. And this is another story altogether. Um, and keep away from that, the crap of third dimension stuff. Um, if you can separate it, view it from above. I learned this many, 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 many years ago when I was um, doing my postgrad studies in management. The instructor said, um, who wants to go on a helicopter ride? And I'm thinking, what? I'm not going on a helicopter. No, no, no. He said, close your eyes. And we went up in a helicopter. And then he said, go higher and higher and higher and higher. And just view everything. Right. So this is a little tip when I think about it now. For anybody listening, if you feel like you're being dragged down and stuck in all this crap that's going around the world, just sit Take a few deep breaths, relax your shoulders, relax your body, get in your helicopter, just rise up above as far as you can and you can see everything and you are not attached to the emotion. Mm. And then bring it back down again and it'll make you feel much better. Yeah, you this know, we are the like observer. This. Right. We are the observer of our lives. Exactly. Exactly. And that's all oh, you just made me go all goosebumpy. And that's part of the problem because we think we're in it. We don't have to be in it. Right. We need to be above it, rise above it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a lot to rise above evil, anger, jealousy. You named them all, you know. Yeah. But why yeah. can't we also ascend to love and wisdom and kindness and creativity? People think that it's money. They think it's power. They think it's influence. But sometimes you just have to go along to get along, brains. Absolutely. You have to live Absolutely. in this world with little or no expectations and watch what unfolds. Correct. Like my mama used to always say, it's already predestined from the womb to the tomb. Oh, before. Before your contract signed, before you're even conceived. And you well, sign that contract. Someone else was talking to me about this contract. They were saying, in your life, you know, as you transition, because I'm a person that does believe in reincarnation. Yeah. Uh, I have, you know, seen, I've, I've had a vision of a past life of mine yep. before. Scared me. Yep. Uh, yep. And then I was called to go on a spiritual quest. And everything that I saw in that previous life manifested on this vacation. I'm telling yep. you. It was, so I'm a, I'm a believer, okay? I'm yep. a believer in tons of modalities. Yeah, uh, it seems like the Africans and the Asians have been here forever, and Australians. Oh, the this, Aboriginals, yeah. You've got absolutely. the wisdom of the Aborigines people. They have an extra chromosome. They're some yeah. of the very first people on the planet, and they're treated like sloppy seconds. Yeah, 
you know, at, but the Native Americans, the same thing. And I studied Native American history in a Bachelor of Arts degree. And I, I did a lot of study when I was actually living in the US and I've been to powwows and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely, and it's the same with the Aborigines here. You know, you listen to their music, their smudging, their, the bush food that we've got. Yeah, the fruit and veggies. I mean, it's just unbelievable what they do. And the, um, the let's call them new Australians, and now looking and particularly um, chefs and um, foodie type people are all looking at the bush tucker, we call it. And, uh, but if they sat down and talked talk to them, they probably have an herb or a spiritual practice to get rid of the damn COVID. I'm not hearing a lot of, uh, you know, secluded tribal indigenous people experiencing this unless there is Western influence. Yeah, I know. People coming into it, you know, I, and I don't know. I don't know. I, well, I, it, all of us, all of us can do um, a lot to um, send out love. Now, every single night, every single night without failure, I lie in bed before I go to sleep and I pull in divine love. And I, you know, to me, I don't care whether it's God, Buddha, Allah, Mother Earth, I don't care, it's all soul, it's all the same thing, uh, but I call it God. Um, and I call in God's divine love into me first. We have to do it to ourselves first. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then what I do is I imagine, you know, a cone around an animal's neck when it's had an operation? Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine this big cone coming out from my heart chakra, big, big cone, divine love. And I send it out to the whole planet. And it's up to those people as to whether they want to receive or not. I will never know. I will never know who has received. I've asked for healing on the on the planet and all the people, the fauna, the flora, the you know everything. It's up to them to receive it. Absolutely. So tell me about the work that you're doing with clients now. Um, I am doing a lot of work. All of a sudden, it's all sort of gone berserk for some peculiar reason. Um, but I'm not arguing that, and uh, it's the way it's meant to be. God's will, if you like. Um, and I have a pretty long list, pretty long list. I did have put it on hold for a little while when my husband first went into hospital because I was traveling backwards and forwards to Canberra, which is a four hour drive one way. Um, and we weren't sure whether he was going to make it or not. So, um, I put it on hold, but I've got people waiting. Well, so you anybody doing, wants you're doing some amazing work. Uh, and I really, really appreciate the sacrifice. And I call it a sacrifice. It, it's a joy to you. It's something that you enjoy doing. But it is a sacrifice because it's a. Yeah, I'm serving. We're serving. all here. Yeah, we're all here to serve. So I don't see it as a sacrifice. I'm passionate about helping people. I'm an Aquarian sun sign. It's all about humanity. I want to help humanity understand what they're on about. If they don't want to, that's absolutely fine by me. That's it. But there are plenty of people out there who do want to know more. And, I, and they need to know more. They do need to know more, but that's not for me to judge. That's for them to decide, make their decision as to whether they want to um, go there. And it may be that I'm not the right person, but I can refer them to somebody else. I'm happy to do that. You know, there's plenty of people around. There's plenty of love to share. There's plenty of money to share. Yeah, but there's not the right, there's not always the right energy. And I'm glad Correct. that you are, you know, uh, your ego, because you have a gift, you know, that your ego is not allowing you to say, oh, okay, well, I'm the one that can help you. No, like, no, no. Yeah, like I, I said, like that, one, like that woman told me, she says, well, I'm, you know, I'm the one that can heal you. <laughs> I'm like, well, hell, I didn't think there was nothing wrong until you got to moving my body all around. And stuff. <laughs> you know, you invaded, you invaded into my personal space, which kind of was kind of scary. Uh, yeah. you know, and that's not good. Okay, so no, hold on. Hold on, Jane, uh, because you are a um, wealth of information and you are so cotton picking fun. Like I said, I wish that you were here close to me so I could reach out and squeeze you. I'd like to squeeze you too. I uh, know, but you know what? Life is good. And you, you life know, is a stranger. 
here on the edge, the place where the conversation is pointed. See, I'm here and I'm here and I'm there. I'm everywhere, brain. You're everywhere, babe, everywhere. Everywhere. So what I need you to do, uh, I need you to give us your contact information. You can work with people virtually. If they want to know more information, like I say, brains, you know, information is power if you apply it. You don't have to necessarily sign up, but once you get into it and she gets to reading your records and telling you some things that you didn't think that you knew and realizing some of these things are really evolving in your life, you're going to want to know more. You know, you may even want to become a practitioner or a teacher yourself. So, uh, Jane, please tell them how to get in contact with you, beautiful. The best way to contact me at the moment because my website is playing up is on Facebook. And if you look up Jane Perkins Holistic Living Coach or JPHLC on J -P -H -L -C. Facebook. JPHLC. Facebook. Yep. And all so your be, it'd be www.facebook.com forward slash JPHLC. Take a look at it. Google the information. Let you know. Let you know that she's authentic. What she's talking about. She's dedicated ten years of her life to help you, because she's got the secret. You know, she got two little assistants. I love. Them. I do. I do. They're this big. I don't even know their names, but they're just so gorgeous. Are they? Oh, you know what? And I believe it. I believe it. I'm. I'm into the little people. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, bless you, April. So I thank you so much, Brains. I need you to go in and subscribe. Do what you need to do, okay? I need you to subscribe to raise those numbers. I need you to like. I need you to love. I need you to share. I need you to care. I need you to give. I need you to win. Damn it. That's why I and do And love. And love. And love, love, love. Love, love, is all love. Love, love, love. love. And, and on but, that... And on that note, we're just, you know, you can't, uh, you can't do it any better. Somebody told me something to close with. They said, if you are not on the edge, you are taking up way too much space. <laughs> I love you, Jane. Oh, thank you so you. much for being here, baby. Come back and see me real soon, okay? Okay, and thank you. Okay, okay bye, everybody. Bye, bye, -bye. April. Big hugs.